Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, mahaba, unumulu wanji, namaste, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast and iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are so delighted and so, so, so very honored that you join us in our mission to help all families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to tell all of your family and friends about the show. Tell your kids' teachers, their librarians, their principal, and please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app. On Audible, Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Good Pods, Podcast Addict, Ghana, Himalaya, wherever you find your podcasts. Before we invite our guests into the studio, we want to invite you to connect with us on social media. Facebook.com slash Reading With Your Kids, at Reading With Your Kids on Instagram and TikTok, and at Jedly Magic on Twitter. We would also love for you to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. We have an un- fantastic online magazine. It is called Reading With Your Kids. You're, you're going to find some fantastic writing in the magazine, great author profiles, uh, cooking with your kids, recipes, STEM activities you can do with your kids, find out what games you can play with your kids. So much there on the Reading With Your Kids online magazine. And it is free, and it is available at our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Join us right now from the beautiful state of Minnesota. Our guest is here today to celebrate his debut children's book. It's called The Cloud Story. Please welcome to the show, Elliot Herland. Hey, Elliot, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. It's uh, actually uh, a warm day today up here in Minnesota, about, oh, right now about 28 degrees above zero Fahrenheit. Uh, So it's warming up a regular heat wave. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's warm. It's minus 28. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, that was earlier this week. (laughs) Because we will actually have all four seasons in a week. Uh, that, <laughs> it's an interesting place to live. It, yeah, it. Re- I was telling Elliot before the show. I had uh, one one visit to um, to Minnesota, and it was a lot of fun. It was very memorable. I, I, I had a performance there, and after the performance, everybody is telling me about all these places I needed to visit the next day. And I said to them, "I am only visiting the inside of my van in I ninety <laughs> East because I'm going home." <laughs> Uh, well, I hope you had safe travels because sometimes the driving can be interesting. Interesting is, yes, interesting is right. But probably not as interesting as the cloud story. Tell us tell us all about this book. Well, thanks. Uh, the book is uh, a, a real surprise in my life. I never thought I'd be a children's book author. Uh, and it all happened because of my youngest daughter. Uh, she was uh, in school uh, getting her uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts in Graphic Design. Uh, she went to Iowa State University, go Cyclones. And uh, she came to me uh, near the end of her final year and said that her professors approved her request to illustrate the cloud story and i said oh that's that's so touching that's so wonderful and then i thought oh my now i have to write the cloud story (laughs) now see the cloud story came about because when they were little kids i have four kids and as the kids were little i would lay next to them and i would help them fall asleep and uh this is like 20 years ago, but I was already doing meditation and breath work, which is uh, l- luckily everyone's mindful these days. And, and uh, many of us are practicing breathing. I mean, most of us are breathing all the time, but uh, breath work is a lot different than breathing. But anyway, I'd lay next to them and I'd just wax on 
with this uh, story that I called the cloud story and uh, get them to breathe, get them to relax and fall asleep. And I would go into all kinds of detail as the story went on. Uh, and sometimes they'd fall asleep and I'd just keep going because I, I was enjoying the story, right? Uh, so she comes to me and she says that she was going to illustrate the cloud story. And so I tried to write it. Uh, and the first uh, version of it, uh, she told me, sounded like a poem. And then I had to redo it. So I uh, followed her instructions. And then I did it kind of uh, in a Jack Kerouac style with no punctuation and sentences that went on forever. And she said, I don't even understand what this says. Go read some children's books and then come back with something that looks like a children's book. So I did read some very good children's books uh, and discovered that, oh, hey, this is more about the pictures than it is about story. So I wrote it uh, with a lot fewer words uh, and she said, oh, good, all right, now we have to take the 50-cent words and turn them into 10-cent words. So we battled about the word selection and then came up with the final draft. Then she did her illustrations, presented the books to her professors, and got an A. And I looked at the book, and it was... It was just magic, but I still didn't think of publishing it. Then the pandemic was around, and uh, I got involved in LinkedIn, which is where I discovered you, by the way. Uh -huh. uh, and I was in various groups because that's what you did in during the pandemic. And so in one of these groups, I mentioned, hey, you know, my daughter and I, we created this story called the Cloud Story, a bedtime meditation for children. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should publish this. And immediately people in the group started saying, oh, well, you should talk to this person. You should talk to that person. And so I started on my journey to eventually uh, Halo Publishing International, and they were interested in the book. And so they said they would help me self-publish mm -hmm. this book with their uh, publishing company and that they would help me with a variety of things. So it went through the edits, and it went through the development of the pictures, the illustrations that my daughter did, and that was an interesting process. I, you know, I had never written a book. I'd written articles for uh, things uh, for workers' compensation and uh, for a, a thing called a desk book where I, I wrote something about workers' comp in there for practitioners. Uh, but writing a children's book, that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of work. And going through the edits and, and making sure that the pages uh, match up with the illustrations and then getting the final version of it, it was a process. Yeah. It was definitely a process, but a good experience nonetheless. Yeah. And the final product was, uh, I mean, I just, I loved it. Uh, of course. Uh, but I mean, I, I loved it because it was something that my daughter and I did together and it was totally unexpected. Mm -hmm. And as difficult as it was, that made it even better. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know. Would you like to know a little bit about the story? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the whole purpose of the book, of course, is to teach young children uh, a little bit of mindfulness, a little bit of what meditation is like, and about how to use breath work, breathing. Uh, I'm breathing right now. 
and uh, you uh, you use breath work to calm yourself and relieve yourself of stress. Of course, if you tell a little kid, hey, we're going to do a little bit of meditation now, and we're going to do some breath work, uh, you know, breathe in, count to four, hold it for four, breathe out, count for four, hold, uh, let it out for four, you know, that four, 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 some people do it differently, but that's basic breath work. Mm -hmm. And so that helps relieve stress, helps calm you down, and helps you sometimes fall asleep, mm -hmm. especially when it's bedtime. So you don't say that to a kid. You tell them a story, uh, and you sneak it in there. And so uh, I grew up uh, in Winona, Minnesota, a beautiful part of Minnesota, and it has all kinds of natural uh, the rivers and, and bluffs, and it's just, it's a beautiful place. So I, I was very much in love with nature. So I, uh, the story uses breath work and meditation on a trip on a cloud. And it covers all kinds of different natural wonders, if you will. Uh, you know, you start off on gravel, uh, you, you go up, uh, uh, tall grass lined uh, brown dirt path uh, with frogs and puddles. Uh, you see blue sky. You're climbing up a hill, feeling that breath. There are cues in the book that says, remember, take a deep breath. And that's, that's to get them to do that breath work while they listen to this story. Then you're on, on this clover covered circle around a really big tree that has lots of leaves and the sun is shining through it. And so you're, uh, you're sitting under the tree and you're laying under the tree and you're feeling the breeze. You really get into the whole visual and sensual thing, uh, you know, sensational thing. Uh, and it's, uh, it tries to capture your imagination while you're breathing. And then all of a sudden you're waking up on a cloud. Mm -hmm. And that's when the story gets a little more interesting. Uh, cause this cloud, uh, takes you over ponds with birds and lily pads. And then it takes you to a birch forest and oak forest with squirrels running around and woodpeckers. And, uh, then it takes you up and over a snow cap mountain, uh, Again, always remember, take a deep breath. That's the big cue. Uh, and then after that, you're going over a lake, a, a sand bottom, clear lake. You can see it. There's fish. There's turtles. More birds. I really like birds. Um, and then, then into a pine forest uh, where it's very secret. And there's deer and blue jays and pine needles and, you know, doesn't get into all the descriptors that I used when I was laying next to them. Mm -hmm. uh, but because I had to turn it into a children's book. So uh, there's some, but the pictures really capture all those things. And then it ends up in a wildflower field with all kinds of colors and hummingbirds and honeybees and the cloud lays these two children down and they fall asleep and they start to dream and they dream about going on gravel and up a dirt path and, and under a tree. And it's kind of a circle and rarely do they make it to the beginning of the next circle. Uh, a friend of mine got the book and said her three-year-old fell asleep by page 19. Uh -huh. um, I took that as a compliment. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that I've read books where I fall asleep by page 19, and that's not necessarily a good story. But this, the purpose of this book is to help kids fall asleep. Right. The purpose of the book was also to help my daughter get something into her portfolio. And I had... No idea 
what a wonderful artist she really was. Mm -hmm. And the uh, whimsical, I guess, would be the word. Uh, drawings, illustrations, I guess, uh, would be a better word for it. Uh, that would capture the story in the pictures so that kids who can't read yet can hear their parents' voice captured in the pictures. And, and the characters are such that children of all kinds can see themselves at, in the book and get captured in the story and in the breathing and hopefully captured by the Sandman as well. Yeah. Well, one of the things that, that occurs to me as we're speaking about this and speaking about your book is we've, he we've heard of so many kids nowadays that are experiencing anxiety at, at, at an incredibly young age. And I'm imagining that with a book like The Cloud Story, parents can can start to use these techniques not only to help their kids go to sleep but just give them some of the tools that they that they need to um, start dealing with some of the anxiety that they may be feeling for whatever reason for being isolated by the pandemic sure. and not being able to see friends or because everyone is on their cell phone texting and sometimes they're texting, texting each other when they're right next to each other mm -hmm. so that we parents don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but you're right. Um, you know, the, the book, of course, is for the purpose of helping children fall asleep. But I also wanted to introduce not only the children, but the parents too, uh, about how to meditate, how to use breath work how to calm down, how to let go of some stress. Uh, because we live in some interesting times. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of stress in this world that we can't do all that much individually about it, but we need to take care of ourselves. Right. And uh, I think that meditation whether you're uh, an atheist or you're a, a, a Catholic or you're Jewish or, or you're a Muslim, whatever your faith might be or, yeah, because meditation is across the board. Mm -hmm. Lots of, uh, lots of prayer is meditation. Mm -hmm. Um, and then breath work is a neurological thing that people are becoming much more mindful that your brain needs oxygen to function properly. And many times when you're frightened or you're stressed, you stop breathing. Mm -hmm. And when you stop breathing, your brain becomes anxious that it's not getting air and that causes your amygdala, your, your monkey mind that's deep inside the brain, very ancient, uh, starts to get nervous. Uh, and that shoots out some hormones, uh, uh, specifically cortisol that causes you to get into a fight flight mm -hmm. sort of or freeze, uh, mentality, which is scary. And it can swirl you into a, a really bad place. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It can make you sick. Yes. 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 So yeah. breathing is important. Uh, getting and knowing that, that that's why I like to walk, especially in nature. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite places is about 1.1 miles from my house. And I will walk there and then I will enter a place called Carol's Woods. And in about at a mile and a half, the breathing kicks in and the cares just melt away. I'm inside these, this wood, this wooded area and listening to the birds. And, and a lot of 
these ideas that are in the cloud story come from the experience of enjoying nature, hiking, unbeknownst to me at the time when I was young, breathing, Mm -hmm. and enjoying uh, the experience of being, now there's a word, bathing in the forest, Mm -hmm. you know, being surrounded, immersed in uh, the, in nature. Yeah. Yeah. Such beautiful images. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy your daughter and, and encouraged you to write this book. Sounded like she was a real taskmaster too. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Well, daughters are like that. I, I, my, my daughter came down to take care of me and she did a really good job and whipped me into shape. Which was which was really good. Tell me now you you've written the cloud story and um, it sounds like you're incredibly happy about the experience. Your daughter created this for her her resume. Uh, are there more books coming from this father daughter team in the future? It's funny you should say that because uh, the other day, shortly after the book came out on January eighteenth. And available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Just type in my name, and you'll find it because that's the only book I've I've done. Uh, she said, because she knows I'm excited, and I get really excited about things, perhaps too much. But she said, okay, we are not going to start writing another book for at least six months. I said, okay. That's fine, but I have some ideas. Maybe the cloud takes us to outer space and we start visiting planets. Uh, maybe the clouds start to show different emotions and we start to explore the emotions expressed in clouds. Um, there's all si- sorts of things. And may- maybe we don't even use clouds. Maybe we use these characters that she's developed, which have no names. Uh, maybe they do something differently. Maybe they ride on some other sort of natural thing, a log down the river. I don't know. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of things you can do in children's books. Children's books give you a freedom to express everything, anything you can use. A children's book to teach difficult subjects. I read when I was, you know, when she went, when she made me go and read children's book books, I read a book about death mm-hmm. and how to handle death. What an amazing story that was. I read a book about divorce and about moods. And of course, I read a book about the moon. And Mm -hmm. saying good night to a moon Mm -hmm. and good night to all of these other things, uh, and uh, books about love, uh, and books about nature, like the cloud story. Yeah. Yeah. Children's books are incredibly powerful. And the time that we spend reading children's books with our kids is, is especially powerful to bring us closer to our kids. And I'm imagining you experience. The time you spent creating a book with your daughter brought you two very close together. Yes, most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> when even, we weren't fighting about the words I was using. Well, it's even, even between, you know, those struggles can uh, bring us together. One of the things that, that uh, you know, I like to remind people is, you know, when we go to the gym, um, it's lifting the weights doesn't make us strong. It's when we tear the muscles as we're lifting the weights, and those muscles are healing. That's right. what makes us strong. And uh, I think a lot of times when we're building something with our kids and we are fighting about ideas or words, it's struggling. Yeah, yeah. It's struggling. It's that struggle that brings us closer together. So I'm really happy. Yeah. I'm really happy for you and your daughter. You mentioned yes. that you mentioned that the books are available on Amazon and um, BarnesandNoble.com? dot com. Yep, awesome. and uh, also at Walmart, a- and they're available in England and Germany. And uh, someone in England actually uh, uh, 
uh, bought one. So now I can actually say it's international. Roleplay. I'm worldwide. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Well, we want to encourage everybody to check out The Cloud Story, a beautiful book by our guest, Elliot Herland. Elliot. And Katie Marquardt, yes, my illustrator. Katie Marquardt. And uh, Elliot, would you um, be so kind as to come back in six months or 10 months or a year, whenever it is that your daughter gives you the green light to get that second book published, come back on and maybe come back on with her? You know, I would love to do that. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, I will, you know, I'll contact you. So awesome. We've had a great time speaking to the author of the debut children's book, The Cloud Story. Elliot Herland has been our guest. Elliot, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you uh, for having me. You're a wonderful host. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. And will join us for the next exciting episode of the show we are so grateful that you're part of our beautiful reading with your kids family we'd love for you to connect with us on social media facebook.com slash reading with your kids at reading with your kids on instagram at jedly magic on twitter if you are on linkedin please connect with jed doherty we also have a reading with your kids page on linkedin we would love for you to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Authors, click on the Authors Click Hit button to find out how you can be a guest here on the show and find out how we can help you celebrate your book with the world. And also, parents, please be sure to visit readingwithyourkids.com to download our free online magazine. Hey, we want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we want to start by thanking our amazing guest. I also want to thank my team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Chris Starty, Anna Larry, Soji Franklin. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.